Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So in this video I'd like you to make a guide on how to build a healer. So you can maximize your outgoing healing with these new combat changes. So this should encompass all of the traits from the Paladin to the Cleric and to the Warlock. I won't be going over their specific powers and class features etc. But I shall just be going over the statistics, the boons, the companions and mounts you should be using to maximize your healing. So here's my main character sheet with my main stats. And with a healer you want to be stacking as much of this power to gain that maximum outgoing healing. Along with that you also want to maximize this critical strike and critical severity. And finally you want to maximize your pure outgoing healing. Now all of these four statistics you have two things which you can do to maximize them. First you can cap out the rating. You can see when I have them on red here it means I'm over the rating and I have the 50% max from these ratings as you can see when I hover over each of them. The only drawback here is you're not able to stack any of the outgoing healing rating because it's just directly tied to your combined rating and there's no other gear pieces that are going to give you this rating. So we just have it there at our base. You can see other stats have that same similar score because of it just coming from combined rating. Now one thing that will overall effectively boost your outgoing healing is your damage. Our base damage is now entirely only affected from our total item level. So the higher item level you have, the more damage you have or the more healing you have. I know it's a little confusing, but yes, damage for us is equal to heals. And But this is only relative to this. This score here, this base damage, is directly multiplied by any of our healing capabilities. When slowly building up your character, you want to prioritize stacking as much power rating as possible once it's hit the cap then you start with your critical strike rating and finally your critical severity rating that aside these are the three main ratings you want to fully max out so what i have done is i went and equipped gear etc that is going to help me do that as you can see the most enchantments i'm running are actually dark enchantments to give me that critical severity to get that rating higher as a healer, pretty much all healers, you want to be running the Tiamat set. This set will give you that increase of 5% outgoing healing and also 5% incoming healing. Now when module 20 comes live on February the 9th, we shall be getting a new artifact set, the Fey Star set. And this Fey Star set will be the best artifact set for a paladin healer. That is if you can't manage to cap out that power to 90% by other means. This set will give you 5% extra power whenever you have a shield or temporary hit points. This will last 6 seconds and I'm assuming it will keep refreshing. So whenever you block, that's when you would gain the power. And whenever you cast a power which will give you a shield, then that'll also last, but you'll have to recast uh, it. So for a Paladin healer, that's very easy to gain that 5% power all the time by just holding up your shield every 5 seconds or so, and then you'll continually have this bonus. And this 5% power is pretty much the equivalent to 5% outgoing healing. However, if you have more power than your outgoing healing, then it will be have a little bit less of an effect. But the bonus to the item level you would gain by running a higher set like this one over the Tiamat set will make it more advantageous along with having a higher artifact to boot. You also want to be looking at gear that is also going to give you those ratings that you need whether it be power, critical strike or critical severity. As you can see with this headpiece it gives me that minor bonus of that extra critical strike. There is hunt gear out there that will also benefit you. For example, you could run the rib cage. When this get fixed, it can give you that extra critical severity and the critical strike when you heal targets for a total of 10% of your maximum HP, which is very viably doable on a healer. Especially 
like cleric healers with your healing word that's pretty nice and with paladins we can generally do it with our divine shelter and warlocks with their soul storm but that aside what you mainly want to be concentrating on is upping this damage and to up this damage you need to up your item level so make sure you have a decently high amount of item level by having the highest gear available to you albeit if you look at my feet here the only reason why i'm running this is it gives me the minor bonuses of critical severity and critical strike if you look at other boots like this one which is a little bit higher level on item you can see it only gives me critical strike and then critical avoidance which i don't really need so you can use this to your advantage to balance those things now while we're on this main page i'll talk about just the overall enchantments we already touched on it i'm using dark enchantments in my utilities now the reason being is we now have a new stat called forte and it is generally unique across all the different classes and their paragons for example as a healer we will always have at our primary statistic you can see our divinity regen so this is going to majorly contribute to how much of that divinity we can gain over time now this is divided up over these three different statistics our secondary one is being critical severity and our third one being awareness now initially if you look at my forte i have 56.4 percent and this is divided up exactly at 50 percent of this percentage so that would be just over 25 percent goes to my divinity regen so i'm gaining that much more divinity over time it's about 20 percent there and then this is divided again by two so i have about 14 percent added to my critical severity and another 14 percent added to my awareness and awareness is very good for the survivability especially in trials where bosses have a hundred percent uptime of combat advantage so yes you want to be running those darks in your utilities for defense you normally just want to run radiance for that extra maximum hit point so nothing's changed there and you normally want to be running that bark shield for trials alternatively you could run a shadow cloud for when you're fighting lots of mobs but if you just want to invest in one get a bark shield generally you won't be hit too often by mobs so you should be okay there as our headpiece here you can see i'm using maximum hit points i'm only doing so for the extra survivability there are alternative overloads for example if i remove this one you can see there are other ones available to us like the lesser white dragon glyph there is also the greater dragon glyph and these will give you a little bit of boost to your power and also your healing however this healing will be an additional proc on the heal so you can see when i have this active i will deal seven percent of my initial heal as an extra heal this is okay but when you're healing your players to full hp with one heal this ends up as directly useless so you might just be better off stacking more hit points or you just don't use the overload altogether if you don't need it and for our second overload make sure you're running devil's precision this will give you that extra five percent critical chance it gives accuracy which is useless to us but the critical chance will help you stack this up a good bit higher there by five percent getting us closer and closer to the 90 percent now with our weapons it's uh, arguable right if you're in a long long boss fight then you might want to run with the celestial otherwise the lion hearts are pretty much one of the best out there giving us that 7.5 percent outgoing healing i'm currently on the preview server here and you can see that the lion heart still gives 10 percent this has been nerfed down to 7.5 percent but that aside the extra survivability buff from the Lionheart weapons is, can also be a really nice bonus. But other than that, you literally just want to run with weapon sets that are going to give you buffs to either these three stats here or your outgoing healing. For example, you could run like the Alabaster set here, giving you the extra percentage in power and the extra percentage in critical strike. And you'll gain a max of 10% there when you're against a certain amount of enemies but if you're just against a boss this will just be five percent for one minute and there's lots of other weapon sets out there don't be afraid to play around with literally any of the sets because now they don't have weapon damage linked to them anymore so you don't have to worry too much on that 
like we could do pretty well again with the watcher set there power and critical strike and i'm sure you guys can look around for yourselves so moving on yes i have the tiamat set and i also have then with the rings you can use either piercing rings of the assassin to give you critical severity or you could use striking rings of the veteran or those striking rings of the master to give you critical strike i found it very easy to cap my critical strike so i went with critical severity here and it matters not and for shirt and pants i'm literally just going with the highest item level i possibly can and then for our artifacts again it's literally you just want to go with the highest item level there to give you more damage to give you that more healing you also want to keep in mind that ideally they'll also give you power, critical strike and critical severity. But as you can see, it's very easy to go over the cap on it here when you stack up the right things. So that's pretty much it for the gear and the statistics on what you want to build up as a healer. And every healer is the same in this regard. So now we will move on to our companions as this being another major thing that will impact our statistics that we have. What I have right here as equipment on my companion is I have these blessed grimoires. These blessed grimoires are the highest item level companion gear you can get and we got this from the redeemed citadel and it has double offense slots so we can slot in those rune stones which will give us more of those statistics. And from what you can see there after hovering over them, I'm running a mix of arcane runestones, profane runestones, and also even an empowered runestone, just to help balance these stats. It's all about balancing. And as a healer, we're very fortunate to only have to balance three statistics. Then for our actual other player enhancements from these companions, you want to be running potency. I had acute uh, senses uh, slotted in there accidentally, but potency will give us that more percentage power when we strike our target, giving us 7.5%. I currently can't fully cap out my power at 90%, so this will just help out with that, giving another 7.5%, meaning we're only 2.5% from the cap of 90%. Then looking at our other things, right? You can see we're not just stacking all outgoing healing companions and the reason being is we can now fully benefit from power and power being a 90% cap it's actually pretty hard to reach with a healer and you may have to slot in this deep crow and this deep crow will give you 7.5% more power on mythic and this will definitely outperform what you would have a 3.8% are from outgoing healing companion and also you want to be running with the alpha compi that's another 7.5 percent extra power albeit if you can cap your power by alternative means then do so and you might not need to use this alpha compi and you might be better off using like the cell sword here in the utility slot to give you 3.8 percent more outgoing healing but yes, 7.5% extra power is better than 3.8% outgoing healing. They have the direct ratios, right? But you kind of want to have them balanced. If you have so much more in one and less in the other, you end up with an overall lower result. For example, if I have six points, right? And I put three points into each two slots, that's three by three equals nine. Whereas if I put two in one slot and four in the other, that will only equate to eight. So you see what I mean there. You kind of want to have them balanced out. So yes, these are the companions that I deem being the best that are currently out there. The Deep Crow for the power, Never Amber Guard for the awareness and the outgoing healing. Alternatively, of course, you can use one of the other five outgoing healing companions here. We're currently using three of them. The Never Amber Guard, the Polar Bear, and the Quickling. You might not be able to afford the quick links so you might want to run with something else but try and get that outgoing healing it's better than the power the other power companions you can get here are only going to be 3.8 percent more power as you can see with this one right here so they're going to be equivalent to your outgoing healing and since our outgoing healing is lower than our power we want to boost that up and we'll get more benefit from getting our outgoing healing up to our power score before stacking more power but if the prices are just not there for you you may be better off just running with some more power so yeah these are the companions i deem to be the best 
and with my summoned companion. You can see I'm using an active combat companion. And the reason being is we can. We can run one and not struggle at capping these ratings. It's still very easy for us because again we only have to stack three of these. So I'm running with let's say like the dedicated squire. There are many other out there. These are just a few of the actual healing companions that are in the game. Actually in fact these are pretty much most of them that are there. I'm only missing a select few. And I will go through these in another video testing out which ones are best. But you may also want to run with a companion that will support your party in dealing more damage and I've also made a video on that. If you were to run with an augment companion I would take the polar bear cub as being the best giving you that extra power rating and the critical strike rating. So that's companions overall fairly straightforward for a healer. Now we'll move to mounts. In our first section here you ideally want to have a combat power that will help your party like say like the piercing screech that will reduce the damage that enemies deal so you have to heal less because they'll take less damage. The aureal armament from the golden swift lion is probably one of the best combat powers for a healer as you will be able to shield your party members for 30% of their hit points and that is probably going to be actually more shields than you can give on your own powers even on a paladin shielder. And then for this one right here, I have Ferocious Predator, which gives me power and also critical severity. And I'm only using this to balance the statistics that I have. You can use alternatively something else that will give you one of these three ratings, power or critical strike or critical severity. It doesn't particularly matter. You also might want to run with Providence since it's very easy for us to cap those three ratings and Providence will give the chance to heal a party member, you or yourself, and then give them a stack of Radiant Weapon where they will basically deal more damage for 12 seconds. Now there was the runic aura which was pretty good to run earlier in this module, albeit now it's not so good as these ratings are very easy to cap out and power is also capped so we can no longer keep stacking this infinitely like we could. So runic aura isn't that great unless you have party members who will build around the advantage that you give them from it. So currently I'm just running with power and crit severity and this ferocious predator comes from all the T-Rexes. Like if you have the king of spines then this is going to be a mythic already and that's just very convenient there. Moving to the stable. Here we have our insignias and our insignia bonuses with our mounts and their collars. What I have here in terms of insignia bonuses it really doesn't matter. You could stack a bunch of gladiator guiles. What I currently have here is just I'm stacking things out and I was also testing the damage that my companion would deal. So I have a Warlord Inspiration here and I also have Assassin's Covenant. And this is a very helpful insignia bonus to help cap those offense stats. They will decrease your defense stats but increase your offense stats making it a whole lot more beneficial to cap those offense stats. Of course if you need the survivability you might not want to run with these. You can see what I'm doing with the insignias. I'm running mainly with dominance insignias and the reason being is it gives me power and forte. The more forte I can get the more stamina regen I have and the more critical severity I have. So if you can run the maximum amount of forte as possible and still balance out your other ratings then that would be definitely beneficial. So yeah you just want to run with dominance and then brutality insignias. You're going to have to play around with the power. We can definitely afford it to stack pretty much all power insignias here and still be able to balance it with the other statistics. I'm a bit over in power but we only need to balance three so it's very easy there. With the mount collars of course higher rarity you have in your mount collars the better because they will give you a decent chunk of item level along with combined rating. Combined rating just have a practical one that's not going to do anything. We have a sturdy one here also not going to do anything but our supportive one the, you want the regal one which is going to give you 5% outgoing healing. That's a decent buff and then we have our unified regal which is going to increase our incoming healing. Again not going to do too much. But finally we have our wayfaring barbed collar. 
Now this collar is going to increase our critical severity, which is again another boost to our heals. So the only two collars, and if you only wanted to get two collars, I would get this critical severity one and the outgoing healing. The others are not going to benefit you other than just giving you item level and combined rating. That's pretty much it. So we're done with mounts. We'll move to boons. Now in boons, they now give you actual percentages to your stats and it will grant you to this other contributions getting you higher to that 90%. You can see in power we have all the percentages right here. We have stacking in critical strike and in critical severity. The rest it really doesn't matter. You can stack your HP, your defense stats, movement speed etc. Then at tier 5 you want to have that forte and you also want to have that outgoing healing. Uh, whoops I have missing one point in the outgoing healing there. Fix that real quick, reduce one HP and gain that outgoing healing. And then we gain that extra 1% there. And that's actually a decent amount. So you can gain 4% from this tier 5 boon. And in the master boon, you're either going to run with Blessed Resilience or with Blessed Advantage. Either one doesn't particularly matter, but I like the increase in survivability for your allies with Blessed Resilience. Blessed Advantage will stack up by adding percentage to their power will also help you i guess and give them a little heal over time and reduce their recharge speed and then for our stronghold boon you can see here i'm just using critical strike bonus these are only going to give you ratings so you can just use them to help you cap those defense not going to matter and utility not going to matter but i highly recommend revive sickness in long fights where you might die so overall that's pretty much going to be it i guess the last thing to say is our like our ability scores you want to have that wisdom and charisma so try choose a race that gives you benefit to these ability scores and also try choose a race that's going to give you a benefit to your power critical strike and critical severity so you could run with a dragonborn which has three percent to power and three percent to critical strike or you could just run with a human it's going to give you one percent to all of your offense stats and all of your defense stats it's pretty decent and that's what I'm currently running with. So if you were to choose the best of the best I would choose Metallic Ancestry Dragonborn for the extra 3% power and the 3% critical strike. But if you don't want to look that ugly there are definitely alternatives like the Human, the Azmir, etc. Just choose one like I said. Finally we go to our consumables. What am I eating to buff myself up? While looking at the buff bar here you can see I'm using Wildstorm Elixir. This will buff up that critical severity. I'm using the uh, prime rib, which will give me just some extra power and hit points. I'm using the watermelon sorbet, which will give me that extra power, 10% of it. And I'm using the superior flask of potency to give me that more critical severity. It also gives a little bit of those ratings for critical strike. You can see all three of those actual uh, buff food are right here. We have the wild summer elixir, superior flask of potency, watermelon, and prime rib. And then you can use, of course, an invocation blessing to give you like power, critical strike or critical severity. And it'll give you 1000 of that. So this is going to wrap up the video. I uh, hope it hasn't been too long and hopefully it's been relatively clear and straightforward. And this should be in effect for all healers. You might have to make a few adjustments here and there. But yes, we only have three ratings to cap out. Power, critical strike, critical severity. And the rest stacking outgoing healing but you can't really get a rating for outgoing healing so anyway that aside hopefully i presented this well if i did consider leaving the video a like and if you're new around here consider subscribing i will see you guys around goodbye for now